this thing on. Okay, eighth time's a charm. We are going to do our DC circuits lab using the FET simulations. And so you'll follow that link that's in classroom, fire up the simulation, and go straight to the lab. Maybe twice. There we go. All right. If you're trying to set up a circuit here, you can see you can drag these different parts onto your lab table. So we're going to put like one cell and we can connect that with a wire to our resistor X. And if you read the color code on resistor X, it says something like black, brown, brown. Ooh, hang on. I forgot something. I'm sorry. 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 Here, let's hook this up like this so it looks like the picture. We'll go like this and then we'll stick an ammeter. Ammeter. We'll go there like this. Hey, look. If you are actually connecting your circuit up for real, make sure you put your ammeter in series with your resistor because otherwise you'll blow up the ammeter. And if you use your color codes, resistor X turns out to be 100 ohm resistor. I'm not even sure what that is. I hope it's the same. And then we'll go like this and bam. And you'll see that these little electrons start flowing around. If you don't like that, if you like conventional charge flow like Castle does, you can switch that to there. And it tells you that there's a current of 0.9 amps flowing through this circuit, which is 900 milliamps. Am I right? then that doesn't sound like a 100 ohm resistor. I'm not gonna lie, oh well, whatever. And then you take your voltmeter and you can put your voltmeter there and there. Oh, because it's a nine volt battery. So then it says to vary from one cell to eight cells or something like that. Yeah, one cell to eight cells. You can do this the easy way or the hard way. So the hard way would be to just keep on adding cells like this. Boop. The easy way would be, maybe you guys saw it there. We can connect this wire on here. And if you click on the cell, you can like literally change the, change the potential to anything you want. Woo, hey, if you guys notice, see the arrows moving faster? you realize it's not right, right? I hope you realize that's right because we're not talking about fast and low flow. We're talking about fast and slow. It's not fast and slow, it's high and low. So their representation of current is a little bit off, but whatever we can live with that. Okay, so there's there's the first experiment. You can change your um, cell to be from, uh, what does it say? one to eight cells, so that's, you know, 1.5 volts, three volts, 4.5 volts, and so on. And get your numbers. Um, and then if you're really freaked out about the fact that your resistances are not what it says to do in the, um, I'm sorry, it drives me crazy that that keeps on going. Those arrows are very distracting. Um, you can click on this resistor and you can make the resistance anything you want to. So we can go with a 100 ohm resistor if you want to. Doop. Okay, and then go. And that's how you do Experiment number one. You'll notice in experiment number two, pretty much the same circuit, only this time you're gonna keep the, the power supply, the, the, the number of cells constant or the, the potential difference constant. And you're going to change the resistor because you're gonna go from 100 ohms to 900 ohms in 100 ohm increments. And you can do that this way, except, ah, it doesn't go up to 900 ohms. Oh no. So you could. If you wanted to, you know, start chaining a whole bunch of these together. Like uh, if you look in your kit, there's a, a block that looks like this, right? Where it just kind of has all these things stuck together. Um, or there's another solution. It's to realize that there's more stuff. Look, if you go down here, there's another resistor that you can put in the circuit. Oh my God. It's almost like I'm sorry. These wires are driving me crazy because it's parallel to the thing. It's just killing me. Killing me. I'm sorry. Ah. Will that work? Oh, that'll work. Okay. Okay. 
So we can click on this guy and now it goes to uh, 100 ohms. And you can go 200, 300, 400, and so on as you like. Uh, you can go up to 10,000 ohms if you really, really want to. I'm not sure you really, really want to. Um, so this other resistor might be a handier thing to use if you're reading your color codes for um, experiments number four, five, and six. Uh, also, if you're using the light bulbs, uh, if you're using the bulbs, you can use this light bulb, right? Um, I'm honestly kind of curious about this light bulb lab because I haven't done the lab using the simulation. So it'll be interesting to see if this light bulb works the way it's supposed to work, but let's see. So hopefully some of you guys will do, do this lab for real and some of you guys will do this lab for fake and we'll see if the results come out the same. Hey, obviously if you're using the FET simulation, you don't have to do any error calculations because if you have any error doing this, it's it's you. It's not, it's not the experiment. Um, which I guess makes it pretty unfair for people who are using this FET simulation because not only is it easier to set up, but it actually gives you less work to do for the lab report. So let's just cut the error calculations off for everyone. That's fine with me, I don't care. As long as you guys know what the values are supposed to be. Um, I think this lab works pretty well. Okay, so there's your brief and kind of rambly primer on how to use this simulation. Bye.